but let us not forget on Sunday, we will have the Super Bowl, Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs, pitting uh, the greatest of all time, Tom Brady, against the up-and-comer, Patrick Mahomes, with the Chiefs. Um, and Tom Brady, 43 years old, six-time Super Bowl champion, still looks like a young chipper kid out there. And, of course, a lot of his success uh, and a lot of the conversation around his success um, comes back to the TB12 method, which he has really refined in the last couple of years. Joining us now to discuss is John Burns. He's the CEO at TB12. And, and John, I just want to start with um, maybe for some of our viewers who aren't familiar exactly with what the method is, how you describe it when folks say the inevitable question of, you know, how does Tom do it and how does he look so good uh, at this age? It looks like he's aging in reverse um, from where I sit. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And I think it's attributable to many things. Uh, first of all, the TB12 method is really about Tom's lifestyle, and it's an approach to how he takes care of himself that he developed with our co-founder, Alex Guerrero. Uh, there's really five key components to you know, how Tom approaches things and what we as a business try and bring to consumers. The first is a focus on what we call muscle pliability um, and keeping your body moving in a healthy way. The second is a unique approach to functional strength and conditioning using resistance bands and body weight and truly functional movements. Um, we also talk a lot about nutrition, hydration, and then, of course, everything that Tom does and what we try and do for our customers is apply that winning mindset to how Tom approaches things uh, and deliver that promise to our consumers. So, John, you have a, <clears throat> you have a, a quarterback that is, that is not aging. Uh, I mean, the guy looks the same as he has the past 15 years. You have uh, one of the most winning is players in, in all of sports. Talk to us about the growth trajectory of your brand. What do you, where are you planning on taking it from here? What stores it is, is it in? How's it growing online? Yeah, so the business, just for context, started in 2013. And it started very modestly with a small facility here in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Uh, since then, we've uh, grown quite substantially. Uh, we have three physical performance and recovery centers, uh, one also down in Boston and now in Tampa. And we're looking to continue to expand that business. And then we have a, a content and e-commerce business where we try and bring information and educational tools and products and services to people online who can't come see us in person. You know, our vision for the business is, is really twofold, and it's, uh, it ties back to that. Uh, the starting point is this body coach client relationship. So mimicking Tom's relationship with Alex Guerrero, we've got TB12 body coaches who work with consumers one on one. And we'll bring this out uh, additionally in the U.S., but ultimately, hopefully around the world uh, to consumers everywhere and recreate that with physical experiences and performance and recovery centers. The next part of our, our growth plan and where we're spending a lot of time, uh, particularly in the last year, is on our e-commerce business and our products part of our business. So you can find TB12 products at our website, tb12sports.com, but we've also expanded uh, into wholesale. So you can find us in select Whole Foods. And obviously with Tom being in Tampa now, uh, we've got some products available in Publix and uh, Whole Foods in Florida as well. And, and you know, John, how did the pandemic um, kind of change, if at all, your business this year? It obviously has you know upset all kinds of businesses, but as we sit here, you know, 10 months later, um, the NFL season got its, they got their year off well, um, Tom is now once again in the Super Bowl. It would seem to me that, it, save but for that interruption, um, the plans you guys had laid out for TB12 maybe a year or 18 months ago are, are probably still all in place, if not even you know above plan. Yeah, we've been very methodical for the last couple of years in terms of our growth and uh, really taking the long view. And I think a foundation of it all, again, is Tom's deeply held belief that uh, bringing to the world the TB12 body coach experiences in everything we do. So I think, you know, if you go back a year ago, uh, this time uh, we had just come off opening a flagship location in Boston. Uh, we had plans, obviously, when he made his announcement to open in Tampa. And uh, as COVID hit, I think the biggest thing that changed for us is just sort of tempering the pace at which we'd roll out our uh, in-person performance and recovery centers. But we're still very, very focused on that. Uh, we took a little bit of a time out from opening new centers, but we're sort of back on the growth path there looking for new locations. Uh, major metropolitan areas are interest to us. Uh, Miami is something that's very interesting to us. Uh, the West Coast, certainly. San Fran, L.A., New York is another market we're interested in. So we're back in a growth mindset on that. I think the other part of it, our business, is really what happened with e-commerce. And not unlike a lot of companies, uh, you know, we had a mixed experience in 2020. Uh, our centers had to close down for a while. Uh, there's different traffic patterns uh, of consumers in urban areas and different markets. So that 
part of our business changed a bit. But, you know, for a period of time, uh, we made up for it in our e-commerce business. You know, if you go back to March, April, May of last year, uh, we were growing many multiples year over year, you know, two, three, four hundred percent year over year for a brief period of time as everyone uh, embarked upon outfitting their home gyms and uh, and whatnot. So that was a you know good period for us. We've come back down a little bit more to projections and plan. But I'd say that the best thing that's happened to the extent you can make some positives out of the COVID experience is it's allowed us to. Uh, be even more focused. But also, I think from a consumer standpoint, there's a real emphasis, as you know, now on health and wellness. And this trend's been around for a while, but it's real serious business now. And I think people appreciate it as a life and death matter, taking care of yourself. And, you know, for us as a purveyor of health and wellness and this lifestyle, I think that bodes well for the future. So, John, when, when Tom eventually does retire, what will his role be in the company? Does he join you as, as co-CEO? Does he take on an operational role? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a great question. And I always like to tell people um, that Tom is actually pretty involved. And I think it surprises uh, many folks because he's very, very committed to the sport of football, as everyone knows. Um, but Tom and I talk, you know, almost daily. I will tell you the last couple of weeks, not quite daily. He's uh, been very focused on the uh, on the playoffs here. But, you know, very much look forward to, you know, at some point when his playing years are done, getting him more involved and more active in the business day to day. You know, all of the competitiveness and all the intensity, the focus, the clarity of purpose that he brings to football is what he brings to our business. And, you know, in my experience, you can never have enough of those types of things. And uh, his energy, his positive attitude and his ideas. Uh, Tom's a very creative person. And uh, I think, you know, any business that's consumer facing can benefit from uh, someone with that skill set. So I don't know exactly what it'll look like, co-CEO, some other title, but he will be active uh, as he is today. I suspect a little more active, but uh, we're all excited for it here. And I know the team gets super excited here at TB12 when Tom gets engaged and, uh, and works more closely with us. And, you know, John, just speaking about some of those um, trends you were discussing about how COVID has really heightened the sense that that health is something we all need to maybe be more cognizant of. Um, you know, just in the last segment, Brian Sazi was talking to, to William Lynch over at Peloton. And I'm, I'm curious how you see the rise of at home gym equipment and, and the way that a product like that seems to have really engaged its consumers and shows that, you know, yeah, fitness has a lot of trends through its history, but maybe there's something different with the way a brand like yours, a brand like Peloton can connect with its consumers to keep them engaged beyond that initial rush of adrenaline when someone gets on a new program. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting dynamic and having been around the health and wellness industry for a while, I have an extraordinary amount of respect for what the team at Peloton has done. And uh, really this transition to people thinking about being in home more for their fitness experience. I come up a level to answer that question. The way I think about it is it's very much about consumer behavior. And in all the consumer brands I've been a part of and, and helped build, um, one of the things I've learned is very hard to change consumer behavior. So one of the ways to be successful is to uh, lock on to a particular consumer behavior and build your business you know, along with those um, uh, the, the, the decisions and the things that consumers do. The issue I think that COVID presented for a lot of people and the opportunity is consumer behavior changed radically overnight. You know, we we're all forced into a cocoon at some level to go home. And so I think the at-home uh, transition in fitness is very real. I think consumer behavior has changed. I think people will continue to focus um, on uh, doing exercise and wellness-related activities in their home. But I also, on the other hand, believe very strongly that a big part of fitness uh, in my experience, is community. And so I think there will, you know, Peloton has nailed it digitally, but I do believe there will always be a need for some semblance of in person fitness and health experience. I think, you know, we're social creatures as humans, and I think we crave that sense of community and that sense of connection. So I think what you'll find, it's one of the reasons, you know, we're so excited at TB12 about, you know, what the future will hold for us is we try and deliver to the consumers both. We try and deliver that sort of pinnacle experience at our TB12 performance and recovery centers, but we're continuing to grow our online presence and providing consumers the tools, information, and access to be able to participate in the TB12 you know, method and lifestyle at home. So, you know, we see the world in the future as being one where, you know, consumers will, if nothing more, out of convenience, spend more time working out at home. 
but they'll get back to wanting to have the in-person experiences. And, you know, for us, we're not a traditional fitness company. When you come to see us in person, we focus very heavily on getting you pain-free and pain-free movement. And we're sort of at the intersection of healthcare, delivery, and fitness. So particularly as it relates to our business, we feel very strongly that for many years to come, that in-person experience will be critical to really um, driving value to the consumers. And, and importantly, I know for Tom and Alex and myself, changing people's lives, like truly changing people's lives. And that's a big part of the TB12 story. Yeah, I think it's uh, some really interesting trends. And um, boy, it's I mean, Tom's been playing basically my whole life, and it's uh, it's crazy to see that evolution from shaggy-haired kid back in back in 01 to, to what he is now. Um, I would get your pick, John, but I think we know where we're going with that one. Um, enjoy the game this weekend. Really appreciate you uh, spending some time with us, uh, and I hope we'll be in touch. John Burns, CEO at TB12.